As we begin to explore uh, nuclear processes, it's very important to remind ourselves the difference between a chemical change and a nuclear change. This process known as transmutation, when we actually change the identity of an atom into a new element, uh, we must be changing the number of protons. One of Dalton's atomic theory postulates uh, clearly stated that in ordinary chemical change, the number of protons never changes. And remember that makes sense as atoms are um, reacting, reactants turning to products, bonds are breaking, new bonds are forming, it's the valence electrons themselves that are rearranging. However, in a nuclear change, Transmutation is that process of one element being changed into atoms of a different element and to do so it's changing the number of protons within the nucleus. And in this slide we see a nucleus, a, a very large nucleus with protons and neutrons tightly bound together emitting an alpha particle. An alpha particle of course is the um, four total parts, two neutrons and two protons changing the number of identity from by two proton units, two on the number line of the periodic table. So transmutation in an ordinary chemical change obviously would not change the identity of an element, but in a nuclear process it clearly would. So changing the number of protons, changing the identity of the element makes these nuclear processes quite unique from ordinary chemical change. And we're going to go through each one, there's five altogether that will be discussed. Um, alpha, beta, gamma, positron emission, and then electron absorption into the nucleus. So one at a time we consider the nuclear equations and looking at that process known as transmutation. Now in a nuclear equation we describe a nuclear process um, a little bit different than in terms of reactants turning into products. This time we're really thinking about making sure mass is the same on both sides and that the nuclear charge is the same on both sides of our arrow. We represent a parent nuclide on the left of the arrow and the daughter nuclide on the right of the arrow. And with the nuclear equation we use the symbols of the parent to the left, daughter to the right, and the emitted particle making sure that the sum of mass over um, atomic number is identical on both sides. So atomic number, mass numbers must be conserved. Now in ordinary chemical reactions, mass is always conserved. That is not true necessarily here in terms of nuclear reactions because we're emitting out mass particles such as protons. Alpha emission is when an alpha particle emits out of a nucleus. An alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons. It is by far the most ionizing of the types of radiation, but the least penetrating. Remember that it was uh, blocked by a 0 0.01 molar, uh, molar, 0 0.01 mol, uh, millimeter thick lead plate. So an alpha decay is going to take out that alpha particle. So we're looking at um, a loss of an alpha particle increasing the atomic number by two. Did I say increasing? I want to say very clearly decreasing the atomic number by two and decreasing the mass number by four. Loss of particle changes the uh, mass number by four and the atomic number by two. If radium 222 over 88 loses an alpha particle, Number 88 minus 2 is 86, the identity of the element. Look up and find the number 86 is radon. 222 is going to convert into 218 in terms of a mass number. So with alpha emission, the loss of a helium nuclei. Beta emission. A beta particle is like an electron moving much faster, but it's not an electron because it's coming out of the nucleus. Coming out of the nucleus emitting a particle would show uh, a, a change in turning in, in one conversion of another. So about 10 times more penetrating than alpha, only about half the ionizing ability. When an atom loses a beta particle, its atomic number increases by one and the mass number remains the same. So thorium 234 over 90, losing a beta, converts the neutron into a proton and it goes up on the atomic number number line by one. 
Next door neighbor of TH on the periodic table is PA. Mass number the same, atomic number increasing by 1. Beta decay converts a neutron into a proton, and therefore you will see the atomic number increasing by 1. What we know so far, alpha decay decreases by 2, the identity of the element. Beta decay increases by 1, the identity of the element. A carbon 14 over 6, when it emits a beta particle, converts a proton, and now we have nitrogen 14 over 7. When the neutron converts to a proton, they weigh the same, but we've moved up the number line by 1. Gamma emission is different. There is no change in the identity. The gamma emission is a complete emission of energy, a high energy photon coming out, and all it's doing is kind of rearranging the nucleus, same number of particles, but rearranging to create a more stable arrangement within there by emitting a high type of energy, most penetrating, least ionizing, very, very short wavelength, and occur after the nucleus undergoes some other type of decay, and the remaining particles um, are just rearranged to create a more stable arrangement. So again, no change of identity. Gamma emission is only energy, and it takes place after a different type of decay has occurred, and it is getting rid of excess energy. So with gamma emission, no change. Let's look at positron emission. Positrons are known as anti-electrons. Positrons have a charge of plus one Coulomb unit, and they have a negligible mass. They are similar to beta particles in their ionizing and penetrating ability. When an atom loses that positron from the nucleus, it remains the same in terms of mass number, but the atomic number decreases by one. Decreases by one. Opposite effect from beta. Positrons take a proton and convert it to a neutron. If I'm neutralizing a proton, I'm going to change the identity by backing up the atomic number number line by one. Positron emission is emitted from the nucleus. It's the opposite of an electron. And if a proton turns into a neutron, I convert that element one to the left on the periodic table. Carbon 10 over six converts to boron 10 over 5. Emission of a positron converts a proton into a neutron. Back up the number line by 1. We also have something called electron capture. Electron capture has the same effect as a positron emission. They're two processes that end up to have the same effect. They just are occurring by different means. When an electron is captured, what's happening is that the nucleus is literally absorbing in an electron, pulling it right into the nucleus. Those inner electrons that are near the nucleus, if one is captured into the nucleus, what we're doing is neutralizing a proton. A proton is then converted into a neutron, and again, that has the same effect by backing up the number line on the periodic table by one. RU 92 over 44, if it absorbs an electron, is going to convert into TC 92 over 43. Backing up 1 converts RU 44 into TC 43. So we have to really study beta, positron, and electron capture and uh, take a look at which direction we're going to be moving on the number line. Beta emission, neutron changes to a proton. When we do that, we move one more positive to the right on the periodic table. Go next door to the right and find who it's become. Positron emission, electron capture have the same effect, but they're happening by two different means. Positron emission converts a proton into a neutron, and by capturing an electron, the proton converts into a neutron. So same effect, just by different means. Notice the top two, beta and positron, are decays. 
decomposition reaction pattern, but the electron capture would follow a combination pattern. Combining two things is that process. This by far, my friends, I believe to be the most important slide, the modes of radioactive decay. Let's spend some real good time studying what's going on in each of these lines. The first of the line is alpha decay, where we have a parent nucleide converting into a daughter nuclide by emitting an alpha particle. An alpha particle is a helium nuclei. If it loses a helium nuclei, the mass number decreases by four. The atomic number decreases by two. The mass number to atomic number ratio, the neutron to proton ratio, that's what N to Z stands for, neutron to proton ratio, increases. So we look at uranium 238 over 92. If it emits a helium nuclei, look at the mass number went down by four, atomic number down by two. The resultant daughter would be written as thorium 234 over 90. In a beta decay, the parent nuclide releases a beta particle, that's the decay, releasing a beta particle, which is like an electron, converts a neutron. So now, if a neutron becomes a proton, you go up one on the atomic number number line. Radium number 88 converts to actinium number 89. The mass remains constant. Gamma is pure radiation emission. An excited nuclide turns into a stable nuclide of the same element by emitting photons of energy. Thorium number 90 converts into thorium num number 90 by emitting pure energy, gamma waves. Positrons are emitted when the parent nuclide converts a proton into a neutron by emitting a positron, the negative one means, in, and you're going to back up one on the atomic number number line. Converting a proton into a neutron is subtracting one on the atomic number number line. Phosphorus number 15 converts into silicon number 14, but the mass remained constant. Positrons are known as an anti-electron. Electron capture, the parent nuclide, absorbs an electron into the nucleus, neutralizing a proton, converting it directly into the neutron. That has the same result by backing up one on the atomic number number line. Ru number 44, by absorbing an electron, turns into Tc number 43. Same effect as positron, but occurring by two different ways. Alpha and beta, positron and electron capture change the identity of an element. Gamma does not. We need to memorize the modes of radioactive decay to become comfortable in writing nuclear reactions. I'd like you to take some serious time and study this slide and commit it to memory. When ready, go back to the PowerPoint and work through slides number 30, number 31, number 32, 33, and so forth. The several next slides, I keep looking ahead, and these are all examples of writing, yep, all the way through number 38. Slides 30 to 38 are examples of how we go about writing nuclear equations. Well, with the help of this slide, I want you to work through those examples and study how those answers are coming up. And when you've done that, start the video lessons up again.